let's say you have like a nephew that you want to advise who asks you, look, I want to make hijrah. He's living living in a different country. How would you set him up with the best advice that you've got from your 20, 25 years of like um, this journey? Let's say he has enough to sustain himself in a Muslim country um, for about 12 months, right? And yeah, let's say that as a like starting off point. What would your kind of initial pointers be? And let's say he doesn't really mind um, where he moves either and he hasn't got a citizenship in a country. So they're the kind of framework. How would you kind of tackle that question? Um, oh, but firstly, if he's got 12 months worth of money. Okay, um, six, six well, to 12 months. Even if it's six months, okay. I would say to invest that money and put it into something that he can country hop. Like, because this put this way, the first country you go to, you know, you might, if you, I'm going, okay, I'm going, I'm going to, to, to Dubai. Yeah. And you make all the istikhara, you do all your research, you, you know, you, you know how much money you're going to need, you know exactly where you're going to go to. You've made the contacts. All you have to do is arrive and everything is good. You might arrive and Allah might say, you know, I haven't chosen this place for you, so it's not going to work out. So tie camel, be able to be able be flexible enough to understand that where you think you you want to be might not be what, what's written down for you. You might want to go to Dubai and end up in Mali mm -hmm. because that's where that's where that's what's been written for you. So my thing would be set yourself up in a situation where you are able to country hop if necessary, which means having some means of income that can sustain you. And I, I did the figures the other day, yeah? Once you leave the equator, once you jump that line, yeah, the amount that you need to survive on, I'm talking about rent, transportation, food, this, that, and the other, whatever, drastically diminishes once you once you cross that equator. If you were, if you want to exclude the Qatars and the Dubais and the, the you know the the, 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 um, the Arab Emirates, for example, exclude those places there. Anywhere else in the world, if we compare what we need to live in the West and take, I would say, a, a third of that, you should be good, yeah? And do your homework. Like, be, be flexible enough to understand that where you want to go might not be where you end up. Knowing that's the case, have yourself in a situation or in a, or in a, in a, in a, in a situation where you can open your laptop and do a couple of hours work per day and earn an income and then go bismillah and then go brave because once you have your income once you have an income and it's stable sky's the limit okay i'm going to be here for the next couple of years knowing that if it doesn't work out i can jump somewhere else and if that doesn't work out i can jump somewhere else and if that doesn't work out until you find something you think you know what okay this seems to be all right I'm going to be here. But even then, that might not work out. So the, mm -hmm. the, the most you know, important thing... You, I mean, with that, I, I just want to add to what Brother Hums is saying because mm -hmm. you have to realize that going from Qatar to UAE is like an hour, two-hour flight, maybe. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's not like coming from America to United States to Egypt or something like that, like 14 hours, you know, mm -hmm. So, so to hop around is not really that big of a deal. It's and then on top of, of that, it's mm. not expensive. It's mm. not expensive to hop to go around. And and like the brother saying, like you should be open to exploring. You know, seeing seeing what, how do you can fit into those different situations before you decide. You shouldn't just go to one place and just say, "Oh, okay, yeah," because it may not be for you. You know, and it could turn you completely off. Mm. You know. I, I, when you go to Egypt, if you're looking for like something, something pretty, you'd be disappointed for the most yeah. part. I yeah. mean, they have some areas there, but if you're looking, for, I mean, especially where we are, because a lot of uh, Tulab Ulam and the people that's trying to learn Arabic and this type, they live rough. A lot of the brothers live rough, you know, and the areas are just, you know, some in some cases seem unlivable, you know, but <clears throat> you also have areas that are nice. But you, but you have to jump. You have to get in, look around, 
say, okay, this is not really something I want to do, and then move, be able to move to another place and, and, and check that out and see if you're able to do it. And then it may not, you may not be able to get it on that first try, mm. but that's six, that's six to 12 months worth of money. You may never, that might just be your, uh, what do you call it, fact-finding mission. Yeah. And then you have to go back, and then once you know where you want to be, then you start saving for that, uh, mm. for that place. Mm. And then it goes without saying, but the positive of all that, you know, when like people are listening to this and like that sounds like a mission, right? The positive is it's your intention, what you're doing it for, because you're getting rewarded, inshallah, for every step of the way. So we have to view it from like with any good deed, right? Let's say even spreading knowledge or good information, whatever, you have to see it from that perspective and it's even like neuroscience like um if you see a struggle as being potentially rewarding it's much mm. easier for your brain to kind of accept it and not get um like that damaging kind of stress it might be stressful but it's mm. like a good stress that builds you up